Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been trying to cover all of the details of the fake candidate cases down in Florida. To sum up for new viewers, political operatives and dark money groups hired at least two people that we know of at this point to run as Democrats for Florida state house seats. They pretended to be progressives, and this was to siphon votes away from the actual Democrats in the race, whereby allowing at least one Republican to win in November of 2020. And news has been trickling out about the largest energy company in the U.S. and their links to these nefarious actors. So Florida Power and Light denies any involvement in this scheme, but their private messages with these people and entities are highly suspicious. Now it's gotten much worse for them. According to the Guardian News outlet, FPL, Florida Power and Light, was livid because Democratic State Senator Jose Rodriguez proposed a law that would have saved renters millions of dollars in electricity bills. Rodriguez's bill would have allowed the landlords to sell affordable rooftop solar power to their tenants. So in a 2019 email to two of FPL's vice presidents, the CEO of FPL, Eric Salagi, wrote, quote, I want you to make his life a living hell, seriously. So shortly after receiving that email, one of the VPs of FPL forwarded it to a company I've talked about before. They forwarded it to the CEO of Matrix LLC. Matrix, as you guys might remember, they're a political consulting firm, and they were deeply involved in these fake candidate cases, according to the evidence, at least, that's been released so far. Matrix spent a ton of money helping to promote the fake candidates, or what they call ghost candidates, and one of them was against Jose Rodriguez. And in his case, it unfortunately worked. A man, as you guys might remember, named Alex Rodriguez was paid approximately $45,000 to pretend to be a progressive Democrat, even though he was a, re a registered Republican prior to filing his candidacy documents. Well, both Floodlight News Outlet and the Orlando Sentinel News Outlet are reporting that Matrix worked with numerous power companies throughout the country to try to stop the transition from the climate-destroying energy sources that companies like FPL use to things like solar and wind. So, for example, in addition to FPL, Matrix also worked for a Florida-based company called Gulf Power. And then they also worked with Alabama Power and other various environment-destroying companies. And these were all over the country, like I said, in Arizona, um, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia. They say that Matrix worked to influence politics at every single level. This included mayoral races, uh, county commission seats. They even worked against Florida lawmakers who attempted to change the state's constitution to try to reduce the harm of climate change. And as The Guardian stated, quote, big power companies operate as monopolies with captive customers in much of the Southeast U.S. They are supposed to be closely regulated, but their profits and unchecked political spending makes them some of the most powerful entities in the state. And The Guardian gave another example of FPL wielding this power to increase their profits. Um, in 2017, they say, a South Florida mayor passed an ordinance requiring rooftop solar panels on all new construction. 
FPL, of course, was pissed because they were going to lose money from that. So they used their operatives to remove this guy from office. According to a memo drafted by a Democrat and a matrix contractor, a guy I've talked about before named Dan Newman, he told FPL that repealing that ordinance would be difficult. So instead, Newman suggested, quote, Mayor Stoddard's electoral defeat and changing the makeup of the board. So this is a Democrat, again, working with them to try to oust another Democrat who is trying to help with climate change and save people money. Again, not everyone with a D behind their name can or should be trusted. And here's why this can't be stopped. With the exception of paying someone to run as a ghost candidate, none of this is illegal under our current system. Corporations can pay vast sums of money to buy politicians or their votes, uh, you know, on specific legislation under our existing laws and regulations. There is absolutely nothing illegal about it. This is thanks in large part to Citizens United and our conservative Supreme Court justices who basically just rubber stamped all of this. This is all completely legit, according to them. So unless someone can prove that FPL was somehow involved in the transfer of money to one of these ghost candidates, they can continue to use their money and power to influence and manipulate the system and these lawmakers. As I've said over and over again, unless and until we reverse Citizens United and until we get money out of politics, we will never see the changes that we desperately need. And this affects everyone. Climate change is affecting everyone. That is the key, guys, getting money out of politics. We have no hope for the future until we do that. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care, and I'll talk with you soon.